uh, six, seven months, which uh, has been a dream job that I couldn't even imagine that exists just a year ago. But here I am uh, leading Bitcoin uh, strategy and integration into a football club and uh, where we're really trying to marry um, football and Bitcoin in the pursuit of freedom. Now, what do I mean? One who falls fighting for freedom. Uh, oh, 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 my, 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 um, only one who is who is truly free can be called human in the full sense of the word. Christo Botev, a Bulgarian revolutionary and a poet who was shot dead while fighting for Bulgaria's freedom. But Botev never truly died. It was only his body that left his this physical world. To quote one of his most famous poems, one who falls fighting for freedom does not die. And until this very day, Christobotev lives in the minds and in the memories of Bulgarians as one of the most revered and respected historical figure. Botev also vividly is present in the lives of tens of thousands of, um, of uh, fans of Botev Plovdiv, Bulgaria's oldest football club established in 1912, named after Botev the freedom fighter. Now, Botev, Botev Plovdiv is located in my hometown in Bulgaria, which happens to be uh, the European, um, uh, the former European uh, capital of culture. It is the cultural capital of, of Bulgaria. And it also happens to be the oldest continuously inhabited living city in, in Europe. Um, and uh, I use this opportunity. And it's also the city, by the way, that uh, I have seen tens of and, and like, Lots of people come to, to Plovdiv and all of them basically have more or less the same impression, which is like Plovdiv is the best city I've ever been to that I didn't know even exist before I actually went into it. So I use this opportunity to kindly invite you not just in Plovdiv, but also to watch a game of Botev Plovdiv. And speaking of Botev Plovdiv, for you to get a context of what the club is like, you can think of it like the Liverpool of Bulgaria in a way, in the sense that it is the club that is the large club outside of the city capital uh, and at the same time it is a club that similarly to Liverpool has an extremely extremely deeply loyal fan base uh, it has like such a strong social capital is what I call it in, ter in terms of people who are giving their they're literally their all for the club just like we are so many of us are giving you know um, so much of, of, of our effort and energy into the Bitcoin idea that they support the club through both good and bad times. Now, through its, uh, through its strong years back in the 60s and in the 80s, uh, Botev used to uh, play on the European stage. Botev used to, um, to win uh, games and beat against Atletico Madrid, uh, Madrid against Barcelona and, uh, and against Bayern Munich. Now, the club also had its not-so-good days when I was a kid uh, growing up in Plovdiv when, uh, unfortunately, the club suffered from, from a really incompetent mismanagement which, uh, which eventually led to the relegation of the club at the very, very uh, bottom of Bulgaria's professional football at which, at which point uh, most people, like even in my city, in general, in the country, in the football community were like, this club is dead, it's done. Right. Um, people are not going to like it was what it was, just like many clubs that existed out there around the world or whatever sports teams they were there and now they're gone. But that was not really the case with Botev. And the reason it wasn't is because of the social capital that I mentioned. And now that I've actually actively been working in the club for for uh, for the past uh, half a year or so, I can say that the amount of people who care so, so deeply and that are willing to donate to invest their time, to invest their energy in this Botev idea is so strong that, frankly, I don't think this club can stop to exist regardless of what happens materially, physically, regardless of who owns the club, regardless of, you know, how bad things might go at some stage. It's just because the social capital around this club is so strong that is, that is, uh, that is what actually enabled the club to get back from the bottom of the of the uh, league back into the top division of Bulgarian football in 2012. 
Now, at the time, in 2012, uh, the club uh, fortunately got a new owner that was uh, way more competent than the previous one. And that owner happened also to be uh, the owner of uh, one of the largest commercial banks at the time in Bulgaria, the so-called KTB Bank. And so both have had the KTB logo uh, at the very front of the jerseys uh, of, the official, of the official team. And at the time, the club started developing a lot. It was really the ambition and the dream of that owner for the club to go back on European stages and to become a modern, respected international club. Uh, in, that, in that pursuit, uh, the, the owner of the club at the time built the most modern training base, uh, an academy uh, in, in Plovdiv and in the whole of Bulgaria. And he also created a ambitious plan and a design and even started building a completely new modern stadium, uh, the Botev Plovdiv, uh, the Christo Botev uh, Stadium. Now, everything was going super well until I remember very, very clearly in June of uh, 2014, when uh, one week um, the bank that he owned went past. Um, for multiple reasons, you know, where history is full of bank failures and, and this, was, this was yet another one. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the details of the case in particular for the bank, but what was important for the club is that once again, the club lost its, its biggest benefactor. Uh, and so uh, it, was, it was, again, hard times for, for Botev and for the dreams that, it had, um, that, that its fans had for, for what the club could do. But importantly, once again, um, you know, the social capital, the people around the club who care so, so deeply again and who are giving their all for this club were those who protected it, who maintained its positive direction, who continued fighting for years, every single year. There, there have been major protests in my country by those loyal fans pushing for the local municipality and for the government to continue uh, to support what the previous owner had, uh, had launched and, and, um, and in particular to finish uh, the construction of, of the, uh, the Christo Botev Stadium. And because of the social capital, they did it. Last year in April, uh, the, the most modern uh, football and stadium facility in our country was opened. And since then, uh, Botev has been playing on this, uh, on this stadium. Um, now, history played a, let's say, a beautiful, at least in my mind, twist afterwards, in that pretty much more or less exactly 10 years after we had the the KTB bank logo on our jerseys. Now we have a completely new owner that has the vision, that has the understanding that Bitcoin is going to be central, not just for this and that business, but it's going to be central for every business. And it's going to be central for what the world will be like in the future. Just like Michael Sigler recently, you know, just, just on May stage said, Bitcoin is for everyone. Bitcoin is for our club. It's for every other club. Bitcoin is for our fan. It's for every other fan. It's just that, that people don't realize it. And so um, here we are 10 years later. Once again, we have a bank logo that shines on our jersey. But this time, it's the bank logo of the one and only global, decentralized, censorship-resistant, unstoppable bank. And what frankly inspires me even more is that this is in complete line with what Christo Botev, that this team was named after, has been standing for. Because only one who's truly free can be called human in the full sense of the word. And I could not be more inspired to be doing... Oh, one sec. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and how can one be truly free, like, right, if, if one does not have a complete ownership, sovereign ownership of, his, of the fruits of his labor, of what he has created? Um... And, uh, and we, we feel completely privileged, to be frank, to be, to be doing what we're doing, to be pushing and to be pursuing essentially the values and the ethos of, uh, of Christo Botev, of um, pursuing freedom for, for the good of mankind. Now, since adopting Bitcoin, um, basically, it's, it could be funny, but it's a reality. Like, even before we, we uh, you know, announce it officially, Basically, the team has been performing exactly like, um, like uh, the Bitcoin price, okay, which has been kind of cool. 
Every time we win, price pumps. Even this week, we got a big win. Uh, qualified for the uh, on Tuesday, qualified for for the semi cup uh, Bulgarian final, which could bring us into the European stages. Price pumped like a lot. Um, and uh, I would like to hope and think that this trend continues because we all know where Bitcoin's price is going, right? And, uh, and I think the reason why Bitcoin's price is going there is because of the proof of work that has been done now for 15 years by people that are engaged in the ecosystem, by all of us here that care and that in one way or another support, share and so on and so forth. And I do believe that if we in this club continue to be doing our proof of work, um, well, our results will, will more or less mimic, continue to mimic the, the price direction of Bitcoin itself. Now, um, there's a lot of positive things that are happening around, right? And which make me super excited about, about what we're doing. But look, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Apart from, you know, we have, we have gatherings of Bitcoiners here at our Skybox. And I, again, genuinely invite all of you to come visit Plovdiv, to come visit us in our Skybox, to, to spend some time with us. But apart from, from this, the reality is that um, it's hard, right? And it's sometimes a little disheartening because, okay, we know what we're doing. We know why we're doing it. But the vast majority of people still don't get, you know, why we're doing this Bitcoin thing. They don't get how is Bitcoin related to their lives today, to the club, or how it is going to be related in, in, in their lives um, in the future. But frankly, it is exactly because of this that we believe that we have a crystal clear opportunity for us to do, to make history, not just for the club, not just for Plovdiv, not just for, um, you know, for, for the country, hopefully. But I would like to think even for the overall large sports and entertainment industry in general. Because um, I truly believe, again, like Sewer said, Bitcoin is for everyone. It's just that people don't see it and don't realize how. And we're in this particular position because, okay, you have MicroStrategy that have done what have done, right, on a, on a corporate level. You have El Salvador that have done what they've done on a country level. But we now have this opportunity to do it on a completely different sports and entertainment level because we're not like a, okay, MicroStrategy is cool, but they're like, a, at the end of the day, a boring business, um, business software service that nobody outside of us nerds here and some financial nerds actually care for. Uh, El Salvador is a cool, uh, is, is, is an amazing case. And actually we're working and doing stuff with El Salvador. But on the other hand, it's okay. It's this, uh, it's this country on the other side of the, of the world. And, you know, that uh, let's say some people don't still take very seriously. But when it comes to football, we're a small, we're a small club. We're a small team. And this is exactly our strength because we're a small team. But at the same time, we have the exposure of tens of thousands of direct people like, like, loyal fans of the club and then hundreds of thousands if not like a couple of million in Bulgaria who actually follow actively football and then you know as we keep doing what we're doing and keep integrating the Bitcoin um, like seriously and saying Bitcoin we are a Bitcoin club and Bitcoin is present here and we kind of bring this conversation about Bitcoin from a totally completely different standpoint from the standpoint of, you know, El Salvador and Microsoft, you know, these other companies and myself, you know, having uh, educated so, few, so many people of, oh, money is broken, you know, and we need to fix it, which is, a, which is cool, but you can't reach many people through this medium. And when we have, you know, a sports and entertainment, like a different type of public consumer organization that is just saying, yeah, we're a Bitcoin team and yeah, we do everything with Bitcoin, then I think this can be a complete game changer in the acceleration of Bitcoinization. And this is what frankly gives me so much, so much purpose in what I'm doing uh, and what we're doing with the club. There's something on the screen showing, I don't know why. Um, now, what we do, what we have done and what we will continue to be doing, I'm going to just like quickly go over here. So obviously we started accepting Bitcoin payments. Um, at our fan shop, at our stand here where I invite you, um, at, um, at um, online at our store, and 10%, or actually I'll, I'll go to this. Uh, we, so we started accepting Bitcoin payments. We have a Bitcoin ATM that we have installed it our, in our fan shop. Um, we are the only place in Bulgaria where you can buy the Bulgarian version of the Bitcoin standard physically, uh, the price of tomorrow. Little book about Bitcoin, soon the Bulgarian translation of the fiat standard and broken money. Um, and importantly, if you come and buy, uh, you know, uh, one of those, uh, one of those uh, hoodies 
or jerseys or any of our merch here at the booth or in Plovdiv or, uh, or, or online, at least 10% of those uh, proceeds that we have are going to go into Satsback campaigns that we give back to our fans who come to the store and who buy those with, um, with uh, fiat tokens, so to say. Um, now, where do they get these fiat tokens? Well, we are the first club that since last week, we have our own, so to say, Bitcoin wallets. I mean, we didn't have really a Bitcoin wallet, but we partnered with Jantry, with Aqua. And with Aqua, when you install it, if you don't have Aqua wallet, obviously, uh, go check it out. The most, uh, I would say, advanced non-custodial um, Bitcoin um, wallet that is combining the Liquid, the Lightning network with obviously on-chain capabilities. And, um, and our fans get their stats back directly in their, in their Aqua Botev mode uh, wallet. We obviously also do Bitcoin meetups every first Tuesday of the month. Um, we get every about 40 to 50 people gathering. I guess with this price action, we'll probably soon go to 60, 70, 100. And hopefully at some point, maybe we, we do like a large gatherings at the stadium too. And a lot of what we have done is actually been recently documented by John Nakamoto, who came and visited. So I, I genuinely invite you also to, to Google um, to Google about uh, Botev Plovdiv, John Nakamoto, and, and you'll see the, the short 15-minute documentary. Now, as I have been, you know, doing this thing over the past, uh, you know, half a year or so, a lot of people, uh, uh, both in the industry and friends and colleagues, are like, hey, George, uh, aren't you going to do a fan token, Botev fan token? And I'm like, no, we're not going to do a fan token. Um, but George, like, see these big clubs. There's Barcelona. There's Real Madrid. Oh, sorry, no Real Madrid. There's Manchester City. There's, there's PSG. These big clubs, they're doing, you know, fan tokens. Probably it's a smart thing to do. Why don't you learn from them and, and, and you know, implement this best practice? And I'm like, no, we're not Barcelona. We're not Manchester City. We're not PSG. And we're not going to do a fan token. Because the most important asset for our club is the social capital. It is our fans. And we don't want to screw our fans. And I don't think any fan would be happy to see this. So who needs this? Okay, this is the, the price chart uh, in fake money. I mean, US dollars uh, of the PSG token. This is the price chart of the Barcelona fan token. In, again, in fake money. This is the price chart of Manchester City in, fan, uh, in, in fake money. And if I would put the price chart of these, of these fan tokens in real money, Bitcoin, uh, then the price drop would be like 90 to 90%, right? Uh, to, to 99%. So no, we're not doing a fan token. Uh, and we deeply believe that all of these clubs, they're really just drunk on fiat finance. They don't really understand economics. They don't really understand money. Frankly, I don't know even why they do it. They probably do it for some short-term profits, but they even themselves probably don't realize the, the implications of what they're doing. Um, fiat tokens are all going to zero. Fiat tokens are financially doomed. Fiat to uh, fan tokens are financially doomed. They are technically illogical, unnecessary, and they're morally bankrupt. And so if we are to do anything on in terms of like finance in the in the bitcoin space it would have to be technically sound it would have to be financially sound it would have to be um it would have to be morally right and correct right um and we can do basically everything that they have been doing with the fan tokens we can do without fan tokens and we'll do it you know soon our fans uh, will be able to vote for the jerseys that we have for the merch that we have without having a real fan token, right? Because that's not ne really necessary. Um, and yet, um, we continue, we, we are essentially, for us, it's not about the fan token. It's like, how can we start thinking? How can we really leverage what we, you know, what the Bitcoin network allows, what the Bitcoin social capital, technological capital, and financial capital can do for us so we can unite this with our extremely strong social capital which has you know allowed us to maintain this club to grow this club through good and through bad times and so what what i am you know i'm, I'm extremely glad and, and 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 excited to share is that 
um, we're going to be launching in the very near future um, Board F12, which is going to be a digital stock out of El Salvador on the liquid Bitcoin sidechain, a sound money approach essentially for us to involve people from all over the world who want to become contributors, co-owners, and to uh, be part of the Bitcoin club, who want to see this, um, this club rise and who want to show to the world what is possible for a sports, for an entertainment organization once it truly embraces Bitcoin from A to Z, from, from, um, from the ground until the very top to the roof with the goal of hyper Bitcoinizing all of our, uh, all of our uh, operations, everything that we could possibly do, we want it to be in one way related uh, to Bitcoin. And so I'm here on the open source stage and I can say we have a lot of ideas of thing, how we want to do things, of impressive things we want to do. But we're also extremely open to, um, to ideas and to anyone here, please come talk to us, uh, to our boot. Please share your ideas so we, can, um, so we can discuss and hopefully like implement many of those. We want to get Botev back onto the European football stages and we want to show, you know, a contagious example of what a Bitcoin-centric club could do. And we're doing this obviously out of El Salvador. Um, thanks to, and I'm going to here use the opportunity to invite our, uh, our dear partner from Jan3, Samson Mao, because this is all possible. This is all possible because because of what Samsung has done. Yeah. Yeah, so this is very exciting that uh, all the foundation work that El Salvador has been doing to put forth their digital securities laws is now being used by Botev to create their security out of El Salvador. I think you might be the first to incorporate and launch a security token out of El Salvador. And I think this is the perfect partnership too, because I believe all the stuff that uh, George and Anton and everyone at the team is working on paves the way for nation state adoption in Bulgaria. So I see the work of Botev and pushing, promoting Bitcoin as sort of similar to the grassroots initiative, like in Madeira here and Bitcoin Beach and others. And we hope by partnering with them as Gen3, we can make something happen in Bulgaria through these initiatives. Can we bring again the slides? Uh, yeah. So I want to finish again with a quote uh, from, from our patron, uh, whom the club was based after, named after, in that human struggle for freedom demands many hands and minds. This was the case 150 years ago. This is the case today. So um, I, I thank you and I invite you uh, to come talk to us again, uh, to get involved. Oh, and also, one sec, I forgot to say, feel free to scan this QR code um, and get on our landing page where uh, we are okay so we are still finalizing the you know the details and, and everything of how the this world's first really stock offering out of El Salvador will work so um, scan it uh, get on the page subscribe there and so you get so you get uh, news of um, of the details once they're out so with that thank you very much